Austin Panthers, it's your boy Aaron Jackman back with another Austin Panther news show, and today we got a good one for y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But in all seriousness, yes, we got a great show for you today. So I'm so excited to kick this thing off and let's get straight into it. And now we got Feature Story up next with a CDL promotional information video. Let's go. Hello Panthers, my name is Jesus Nunez. Do you have a sibling or do you want to be involved with the children education? Well, CDL is a place for you. Here is what some staff and students have to say about the program. I think the CDL program is amazing here at Austin. Um, so when I had my daughter, the teacher was Ms. Gonzalez was always telling me, you need to bring her, you need to bring her. And it took me a while, um, but I knew I, you know, started seeing what they did and how um, beneficial it was for the little ones. And so when she turned three, I enrolled her and she was here uh, for two years. Uh, I think for me, the number one priority was to be able to work with little kids because I do enjoy working with them. So I think for me, it was kind of to be able to get that experience at an early age to see if I was going to be able to decide to be a pre-K teacher or just a teacher in general. It's for high schoolers who want to go into an education field or working with young children. The bonus is they actually get hands-on experience working with children that have enrolled in the community. I mean, enrolled in the program from the community. Do they have to live in the area? No, it's just people that are aware of the program that trust us with their children and they like the one-on-one -on -one individualized attention that the kids get. They get a more focused, um, structured learning rather than a preschool with one person. And this also gives the high school students skills they need to pursue a career in education. Uh, I think it's a great program uh, for uh, kids uh, to get involved um, and build uh, their own social skills. Uh, that's why I had chosen for my daughter at that time to join uh, CDL last school year. But I think it's an amazing program for all kids. Thank you for watching Panthers and remember, stay golden. Hey. It's never a bad day to have a good news story. Today's good news story is highlighting the key differences between the spring break that occurred pre-pandemic in comparison to the spring break that we're gonna have this year. Hey Panthers, I'm Ezekiel Yagida with your good news story of the day. Spring break is just around the corner and we interviewed two teachers and a student about what they did last spring break compared to what they have planned this spring break. 
Here's what they have to say. I am. Um, it looks like right now we're going to try and hit the four corners. And if you don't know what the four corners are, it's um, where, where New Mexico meets like Utah and Denver, right? And so that whole little area, it's a really beautiful area. Um, what, I, what I'm planning on doing this spring break is just staying home. Um, I think I recently bought a house, so I'd probably be painting the whole spring break. So um, I think it should still be a little bit of fun, but a, a little bit safer to not just be out um, traveling because a lot of people want to travel during spring break, and I don't think that's the safest thing to do right now. I think I'm going to go spend it with my dad. Um, I think that's the only place I could go right now because of the whole COVID thing. But yeah, she's gonna be here at home with my dad. It's greatly interfered. I, my son and I uh, bought tickets for that. And I also bought tickets in Houston to watch an NBA game. So we're watching the news, watching the news. Are they gonna cancel? Are they gonna cancel? It's like, well, we can go. And then it start, started picking up more speed with the COVID thing where it was like, Houston and Dallas were becoming a hot spot. So I was like, you know what? We can't. It's just, we'll ask for our money back and hopefully we get it back. And so luckily we got our money back for the, the hockey game and the NBA game. So we're on lockdown. We were on lockdown for sure. We can't go anywhere. So we ended up going to the beach, right? To Mazatlan because things were not as bad just yet. Where I guess I didn't realize how bad things were. Uh, however, when I was there, I was panicking pretty much the whole time that I was um, in Mazatlan because first of all, the hotel was empty. There was not a lot of people. And I was like, oh my God, I have never seen a hotel so empty. Um, the beach was empty and um, there was really no one there. Yes, I was, my grandma was still living in Midland and everything, and I was going to go for the week, but then I couldn't because they closed everything, so I had to stay home. Thanks for watching, Panthers, and remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay golden. And now, we all know everybody wants to get big and strong like AJ, nah, but we do have a health and fitness segment, and I think you guys will like what they have in store. Good morning, Panthers. My name is Sergio Martinez. Today, I'll be showing you how to properly do a mountain climb. So first, you obviously have to get down on your knees and then get in the position like you're gonna do a push-up. Put your both hands straight and your legs like this. Then you're gonna bring your right leg up to your left hand like that, or just upwards. And then you bring your left to your left foot and bring it up. And that's how to do a mountain climb. Different ways you can do them but you can like feel it in your core after also. And um, your, your, yeah, mainly your core is what gets affected. I'll do this daily. It just helps you with your legs, with your whole body itself. And it's fun to do it and it's easy. For this snack, we will be making healthy pancakes with fruit. The ingredients for this snack are one box of pancake mix, milk, strawberries, bananas, and syrup. First, you add in a bowl of the pancake mix, then a cup of milk, and mix very well. Then, you put a frying pan to heat and add butter. Then, put a little of the mixture in the pan and let it there until it's ready. Last, you may add the strawberries and bananas as you like, and you are ready to enjoy. Everybody knows you can't have a good news show without, well, news. So, next up, we have news. Hi, Panthers. My name is Justin Solis, covering the one-year anniversary of the pandemic that has struck El Paso and its nation. Things like masks, empty halls, and empty stadiums have become the brand new norm that people are forced to get used to. Like, did you know, right now is technically lunchtime here at Austin High School. My words can't even begin to explain the enormous effect that this pandemic has taken on the city and its people. It was around this time last year that teachers and students would leave for spring break with the last sense of normalcy for the coming year. 
Since then, El Paso has accumulated over 124,000 cases and 2,366 deaths and counting, according to the New York Times statistics. Yet, although we are all living in the same pandemic, we have all felt the effects of COVID in different ways. It's affecting me also because I thought maybe a couple of people I knew that had the virus, including a family member in California. And you know, it's like that constant thought of worrying about them or, or like worrying about my grandmother who lives on me. Like if I were to get the virus or any one of my siblings, how it would, you know, affect her. It would pass on to her. You know, I've been a lot of time at home, I figured out a lot of hobbies I didn't know I had. Like the one of skateboarding, I draw, sometimes I'll read a couple of books, um, hang out with siblings. barbecue and so that was kind of sad just different it's different we have to remember to wear the mask and then you have to remember not to touch things and so that's been huge i think for for most people just to try to remember that every day all the time i don't know i mean i, I was used to people are very affectionate and everybody gives each other a hug and there's a lot of you know kisses on the cheek and on the 12th of february more than 1 million texans were fully vaccinated as of March 2nd, 2021, Texas is now open at 100% capacity, per Greg Abbott. All businesses in Texas could fully reopen on March 10th due to the government's actions. He also said that the statewide mask mandate would end on this date. Thanks for watching, Panthers. We've been strong for one year, so let's continue to be our best. Next up, we got sports. Hey Panthers, I'm Jeremiah Least to know with sports. On Friday, February 19th, the boys basketball team ended their season in the bi-district round of the playoffs against the Highlanders of Bel Air, where they unfortunately came up with a score of 60 to 55. They ended their season with an overall record of 14 and six. We were able to catch up with a player to see what he thought of the end of their season. I think I could have done way better. There's a lot of improvement I need, but overall, as a team, we did great. Uh, satisfied? Not really, just because I know I could have did way better. But stats-wise, I'm satisfied. I'm taking the memories that we finally made it to playoffs after so many years, and we finally beat Andrus over 15 years of a losing streak. So that's a lot to take in. But it was great times, great times. I think it went as planned. A lot of people thought we were going to be bad. A lot of people thought we weren't going to be that good. But it was planned. We always knew we were going to be in the playoffs. It was always planned. Hopefully the history changes because we were in a, a bad losing streak. Hopefully us getting a playoff victory I and mean, going to the playoffs will make more kids come to Austin and we have a better basketball, basketball season, basketball team overall in general. And I would love to see Austin be successful. Now on to baseball. On Saturday, March 6th, the Panthers hosted the Mustangs, but unfortunately came up short. And on Tuesday, March 9th, they unfortunately came up short as well against the Andrus Eagles. We were able to catch up with a few players to see what they thought of the start of their season. I, mean, I don't think it's been a good season, but uh, we also got a lot of young players, and I think it's some more of a learning experience for them. Just do, just do my best. Uh, do good as a player and uh, hopefully you know the younger guys will pick up mm, the first inning we came out we did good and, uh, there was minimal errors we held them to a little bit of run I mean we were hitting the ball actually the first inning so I think that's that was some improvement from previous games playing with a, a brand new team that like still struggle, still struggles you know it's hard and but uh, for me, I think I've I've been doing good for the games I've been pitching. To be honest, trying to help out the the team more. To be honest, um, trying my best to like not 
lose too bad, you know, because we've been like, we've been, we haven't been doing good and like, it's tough for everybody. Well, I saw that like, everybody's been like, um, trying their best to be honest. They haven't like lost too many balls, like in the other games, they've really come a long way to be honest to like, um, to from like coming from the coronavirus break, like to like right now to like bringing workouts and all that, like everybody's been in like good progress. And I hope we, by the end of the season, we don't end up like on the last games, to be honest. And now on to softball, the Lady Panthers faced off against the El Paso High Tigers and were able to get that win with a record of nine to eight. And now have an overall record of one and four and a district record of one and three. Here's what a few players had to say about their season. Um, it's affecting us a lot. There's a lot of things I can't control with the field and then, uh, for example, too, we don't have storage for our equipment. So there's a lot of things going on not having a field. Um, well, I was out last season because of an injury, so pretty much just come back and prove, prove myself all over again. Um, my end goal is kind of to get first team all district again like how I did my sophomore year and just ball out. With the decrease of players, have you seen an effect? This year, there's been a massive decrease. I know a lot of schools, us included, we don't have enough girls to have a JV team. I mean, it did um, help me like grow as a person, be more independent, and just realize that there's much more things than uh, the little things that we were doing without COVID. Now on to girls soccer. On Friday, March 5th, the Lady Panthers traveled to Urban High School to face off the Rockets and were able to get that win with a score of 3 to nothing. We were able to catch up with a few players and their coach to see how their season was going. This memory that I'm taking with me from all of them is that we are always able to, to be a family. We're always able to come really, really close. I tell them I consider them my, my daughters and I think they see me as a father figure. Um. Senior night for sure. Um, that will forever be a memory that I will hold forever in my heart. And not just because of the game, but just because of the moment that we all had. I feel like it couldn't have gone any other way. I think it went a little bit better than expected for me. Um, I I honestly didn't know what, what I was expecting at the beginning of this year. With everything that was going on, I, I was thinking we were not going to have a full season. And just getting to that last week where we're going to be able to finish is actually, I, I consider that a success. I'll take that as a success this year. We had games that we should have won, but to be honest, as myself, I let myself down, and the team, we should have done so much better. We should have pushed push more ourselves, but we just let our guard down. Um, honestly, it's just the... Do whatever we can at that point. Like, I mean, I know right now we can't do much because of the whole situation. But I feel like as long as you put like your mind to it and you put the same effort as you put in any other game and you play with your heart, then I feel like it's anybody's game at that point. Next up is boys soccer. They recently faced off against the Jefferson Silver Foxes and were able to get the win with a score of two to one. And they will be heading against the El Paso High Tigers on Friday, March twelfth. And if they get the win, they will be heading to the playoffs. Wish them luck. Next up is wrestling. They have recently started their season, and we were able to catch up with a few wrestlers on how they think their season is going. My cardio has been pretty good, but I, I feel I could work on it some more because I was pretty tired at the end of, of my last match. So all the football kids, all the track kids that that join, they're pretty well conditioned. But once they go into wrestling, they're dying in there. I still remember my first match. It was at Austin as well. I wasn't in condition to be to be going a full six minutes, but now that I've really got into the flow, I could I could go for hours. For each fighter, you're not just going to get them once. So you learn from your mistakes. 
Um, my performance, well, right now, for me, I'm starting off. Um, it's going to be a little bit messed up. Um, my takedowns, especially my takedowns. Going on to the matches, my first match, um, that went down fast. My second match, I learned from it. So we were all um, six feet apart, of course. Um, away, they um, sanitize us, and then they clean the mats um, before and after a match. Um, for my first day, uh, first I didn't know anything, not even, not even a takedown, I didn't even know what a takedown was or how to get points or what the points meant, but I see now, I understand a little bit more, everyone's watching you, they're trying, they're, they're saying who's gonna win, um, who's gonna, who's gonna lose, but at the end of the day, it's, um, it's all about good sportsmanship, like, the person loses, good job. Last, but certainly not least, we have track. We are able to catch up with a few players and their coach to see how their season is going. The season is good. We have a small team, but we have successful runners. We have a few who have the capability of making it to regionals. Hopefully state, we are very positive right now. We foster them in that to just be the best that they can be. As I told the kids, if you have that fire, if you have that passion, it will find that inner desire to get it done. My season so far is going pretty good. I have to train on my mileage and my basic, as well as striding. We were all trying to do our best, especially since we are limited to our mates. During the race, she's always saying that I could do it and that she believes in me. I just try my best each and every time. She's doing the best. She's doing the Starting in a race because I feel like sometimes I could slow down and finish strong. You know, to always work hard, always give it your best. Never give up. Done very well. Uh, the meets that we've uh, attended, our kids have uh, done well. Uh, we've picked up some uh, medals at all levels. There's a few kids that have a chance to advance to area and to maybe regional, so we're working hard with them to get them there. We're all progressing from the beginning of the season. We've all practicing hard and working hard for for district. Everybody's pushing it at every race, giving it their all. Kind of need to work on my mental toughness, uh, being able to stay strong in a race, uh, keeping your mind into it, and keep working hard because eventually it's gonna pay off, and you're gonna thank yourself later when when you accomplish it. As a team, we're doing well, running decent times, you know, but we can always improve. Uh, we're pretty competitive, so I'm, I'm proud of us as a team. Does that matter? Are the championship races? Just keep working towards those races. Just play every game like it could be your last. Just do the best that you can. That's it for Panther Sports. This is Jeremiah Least to Know. And remember, stay safe and stay golden. And now, in closing, I just want to say, you guys are amazing. See you guys in the next Austin Panther News show. Stay golden. And remember, Austin Panthers forever. Ooh.